And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. We'll write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800. Eight six six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You know, uh, recently I've gotten a little blowback from people about my car. I've talked to people uh, about gasoline prices. I have said that... Um, that uh, part of the problem is uh, for people who are concerned about the price of gasoline uh, is the fact that so there's so much demand for gasoline. If you want the price of gasoline to go down, maybe you want to stop using so much. And so a number of people have taken the time, and uh, uh, as you know, no stone goes unturned on this program, and there's no question I won't answer. I won't tell you how much money I make. That's about it. <laughs> but I'm not supposed to be doing that anyway. Anyway, um, the fact is that a number of people have pointed out that I drive a Lexus LS. It's a V8. Highway mileage in the real world on my Lexus is about 23 miles to the gallon. And uh, in the city... I'd say about 12, 14 miles to the gallon. That's real world mileage. They always say your mileage may vary. Mine does. So people have said, why won't you get rid of your car? Why won't you drive a less gas guzzling vehicle? And I'm going to tell you the reason. It's because I can afford it. It's that simple. I said to you, if you want gas prices to go down, stop using so much gasoline. Honestly speaking, I don't need gasoline prices to go down. I mean, if they do, I'll pocket the difference. But if they don't, I can afford to pay the higher price. I can afford to put $100 worth of gasoline in my car to fill it up. I can afford that. I'm, I, in other words, it's not that uh, I don't feel bad for you. It is that I can afford to pay $5 a gallon. Are you kidding? I went to Europe and I paid $8 a gallon for gasoline. I can afford it. So I don't need to get rid of my vehicle. I don't feel any guilt about keeping my vehicle. You know what? I don't drive that much anyway. I mean, I have a car. I bought it in March of 05. My, my Lexus is uh, three and a half years old. And it's got 28,000 miles on it. That's not a lot. That is not a lot. So the few uh, miles I do drive, I want my ass sitting on leather. I want my ass heated in the winter and air conditioned in the summertime. I want my GPS. I want my satellite radio. I want the comfort that goes with having a, a big car like that. Uh, the Lexus vehicle is frequently rated as the safest in crash tests and what have you. 
the air conditioning. Uh, you, you, you can hang meat in there. There's plenty of leg room for me and everybody else who rides my back seat. That's why I make the women ride the back seat. Also plenty of room to do anything else in the back seat. Uh, my advice for people to stop driving was for people who want gas prices to go down. If you want gas prices to go down, get a more fuel-efficient vehicle. Stop using so much gasoline. So why don't I get rid of my vehicle? It's because I can afford the price of gasoline. Does that make sense what I just said to you? Tom like is 1-800-5-800-86. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Don on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Oh, uh, you know, I would take exception that when your car, you're left to sell at 400 you know, I don't really have a big problem with that car. My problem is with the guy. He's got a husband and wife, and he's got this big old Hummer, and it's just chalking up the resources here, and there's no reason. He's buying this car for the wrong reason. You know, you're oh, wait, wait, wait. Who are you to decide what the right reasons are? Well, I mean, I think we're, you know, if we're all in this together, you know, I'd say do the right thing. I mean, But we're not, in, we're not all in this together. Yes, Those who can afford gas will buy it. Those who can't will downsize. Yeah, but I mean, sure. So the richest guy should buy just anything he wants and chunk up all the resources. Well, I don't know if you've been noticing. It's always been that way. Do you own a Rolls Royce? No. Why not? I don't want one, but I can't afford one either. Well, maybe, how about a Maybach? What's that? How about a Maybach? Oh, how about a How about a How about a Ferrari Testarossa? How about uh, a Porsche? I can't afford any of those cars. Well, but some people do have them. Should nobody have them because you can't afford them? No, I'm talking about the gas guns. I'm not talking about a, a car like a Porsche or something. That probably doesn't get that bad of mileage. I'm talking about a gaudy car like a Hummer, you know. But I'm just saying it's doing the right thing. The guys can do... You know, but what's the right do, thing? Pardon me? What is the right thing? I think trying to buy a car for your needs... You know, I don't know. I mean, if your needs is to have that Lexus, then probably fine. But I see so many people driving cars that are so far beyond what they really actually need. Well, there's a lot of people with money who buy all kinds of things they don't actually need that use resources or use commodities. Yeah, well, I think, uh, but, I think, but who are we to decide that they don't need these things? Well, I know it's up, it's up to them. It's a personal decision. You can't make I it. I mean, maybe somebody drives a Hummer because they think it conveys a certain uh, image. I'm and sure. they want to convey that image. Then that's what their need is. Well, you know, that's, that's what he needs to do, I guess. It's, it's, I think it's not the right thing to do. You know, people have their own personal choice they can make, and they can do whatever they want, and, and no one's going to come and take his car from them. Well, I could drive a Prius, uh, but I, I don't have to. I can afford to, to drive something bigger. Well, I, just, I think it's the wrong idea. If a guy's a wealthy guy, and I'm sure he can afford to, to drive whatever he wants to, he can drive 10 cars and, and, and eat up all the resources he wants to, I just don't think it's the right thing to do. But but again, when you say it's not the right thing to do, is there, do we have some moral obligation here? No, there's not a moral obligation. It's, it's, uh, to me, it's doing the right thing. You can choose to, to you know, in your heart, are you doing the right thing or not? I mean, your car, I'm not, you know, you've got a Lexus. It's a great car. It's a low-rated car and the whole thing. It's to me, it's the guy, I'm, I'm, I'm the gas dozer, the Hummer. Does the guy have a need? Does he have eight kids where he needs a big car like a Hummer? Well, let me give you an example. You know, here we are in the middle of summer. And uh, last night I had my bedroom set at a cool 68 degrees. Right. Now, would doing the right thing mean I turn it up to 78 so that uh, I can make things easier on everybody else? Well, no, because then you probably wouldn't be comfortable. You know, and, you well, know I would there you say, go. I'd say don't turn it down to, to 45 degrees. You know, be well, reasonable. I, I'm only going to turn it down to what I need, but if I need 60, I'm going to 60. Well, that's probably still reasonable, but, you know, you, you, I'm talking well, about... Who decides, wait, 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 who decides what's reasonable? Well, I think you got to decide on your own. It's your own right. decision to make. That's right. 
you know, there are some I mean, people who cannot afford to keep their bedroom at 68 degrees. Uh, should I stop keeping mine at 68 degrees because they can't afford it? No, I don't believe that. I, I'm, and I, and we're talking about cars here. I think that's the topic, you know, and, and, and using the oil sources, petroleum sources, you know, I mean, and probably the same thing for electrical sources as well, soon enough. Uh, you know, people can do whatever they want to do. I'm, I'm just saying that I think there's a personal responsibility. If you need a car of a certain size, you've got a large family, I'd say go for it. But if you, if you, you're by yourself and you buy a Hummer, I, I think it's a lack of judgment myself. That's my personal opinion. You know, if a guy yeah. wants to buy it, he's going to do it, you know? Yeah, but again, when you say lack of judgment, I mean, to me, the only lack of judgment is you could be saving that money and spending it on something else. Which would also be wasteful and uh, and, and be showing off, but uh, you know, if people choose to spend it on something like that, I don't want the government or any organizations coming in and telling me I can't do it. It scares me when I see things like electric companies trying to get people to sign up, and the electric company will decide whether they're, when they're going to draw your power down, uh, so your air conditioning runs at a higher temperature. Uh, I think they're trying to reserve it, trying to. You know, reserve resources as well as make. Now, that's not, guess what? You know what? Here's a way to here's a way to preserve resources: raise the price of everything. Yeah, people will use less. That's for sure. People would use less, and those who could afford it would continue to use the same amount. Yeah, well, you know, we're seeing that with gasoline. Of course, when when the prices went up, the people, you know, they drove less. They found other things to do, and and we use right. less resources. But I think we can go beyond that. Yeah, Hang, on a second, Don. Hang on a second, Don. Hang on a second, Don. Let me get uh, Jesse on the air here. Jesse, what did you want to say to Don? You know what, Will? You sound like you're just drinking a whole bunch of haterade. You know, you're getting on everybody just because they could afford a luxury car, and you can't. You know, you ain't got no right to tell anybody what they can and cannot drive. I just think it's a lack of judgment to do that. Sure, I mean, you can go out and buy whatever you want. That's, that's the free will we have, but I... To me, doing the right thing is just buying something that's less, that's more fuel efficient. Yeah, but that's for you. That's not for them. Maybe they have the big fat big account that they could afford that. Yeah, but we're all here using the same. We're all here using the sources up. We're using all of the sources. I think we can conserve. Everyone can, you know, could do it. It would help. You know, I'm sure. You know, I'm, I'm, if I have a lot of money, I'm not going to go out probably and buy a Ferrari anyway. You know, that's just my thought. Yeah. They're driving around, they can afford Hummers. You know, if you want to buy their car for them, then okay, I'm sure that they would understand that. But, you know, they want to spend their money on what they want to buy. If they could afford the gas, like Tom says, then they should buy it. Don't you agree to that? Well, they're eating up more resources. I think just because you're, just because you can afford to eat up more resources doesn't make you obligated to do that, you know? I think. Hello? 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 Uh, something went wrong there. Anyway, I think I lost, right. I lost somebody. I lose the other guy or what? Yeah, I, I don't know what happened there. But uh, Don, Jesse, thank you for the calls. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Owen is calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. Owen, you're on the Tom Likas show. Up, oh, let's try you right there. Owen, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Great. Aside from uh, being the the home of the other white meat, we're also uh, the home of the Birkenstock wearing tree hugging shrub humpers, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually wanted to clarify something before I disagree with you because I usually agree with everything that you said. Your your statement about driving your Lexus and sucking up all that gas came across kind of like you can do it because you can afford to do it and because that's what you want. That does, so, it doesn't just sound like that. That's exactly what I said. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad that I understand that. Now, if you were able to drive the same car with the same amenities and the same air conditioning on your ass, the same heat on your ass in the winter, but it, it drove on hydrogen or electricity, something with a smaller carbon footprint, would you opt to do that? Or, or is only if about- I didn't have to give up any of the space and the the comfort and the luxury of what I have. No, it, it, straight across. Same yeah. Thing, oh, absolutely. You know what? If by the way, I I don't want to spend money on gas if I don't have to, but I'm not going to give up uh, the uh, level of luxury that I can afford. Okay. The two 
two things to consider when you're when you're spending that much money on gas. One is that we are all in this together when it comes to carbon footprint of everything that you use in in, in terms of uh, global warming. That's no longer just a uh, kind of a, a quack thing. That, that's actually a reality now. So there's a huge, huge footprint uh, in terms of fossil fuels that we're burning. Secondly, you're, you're basically funding, funding terrorism the more gas you, you spend. You're, you're subsidizing Haji and, and building well, a dirty bomb. Well, you know, uh, I don't necessarily buy into that concept because the fact is uh, that gasoline is being used by China and India. It's being used by Brazil it's being used by many, many countries. Uh, it's not just us. True, but a first world country is going to have to take the lead in this. There's no way that China... But the same amount of oil is going to be sold. If, if, I, if I can serve, somebody in China or India or Brazil is going to pick up the slack. They will get their gasoline a little cheaper because I can serve, and they will sop it up. No, it's, you're, yes. you're looking at the, you're, well, that may happen, but you're looking at the small picture. It's, it's going to entice the, the automobile manufacturers to, to make more fuel-efficient cars. Have you seen the new uh, BMW H, I think it's the H7, the hydrogen car? Uh, how much, by the way, what's the okay. sticker price on that car? $150,000? Well, that's a concept car right now, but we're, we're right on the, on the, on the cusp of, of huge change here. When these I, things I, I happen... Can, I can drive a $100,000 car, but I'm, I'm driving a Honda Hybrid just because I feel so strongly about this. I opted for leather and navigation and, and all of that stuff. So right. I'm, I'm totally with you with the, with the comfort, but there, there's a huge... Can you put three people in your back seat? Uh, two and a half. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Come on. How many times do you have five people in and your And you're car? in Portland. My God, you couldn't get two women in that back seat. <laughs> You'd be happy to get one and a half. That's my point. How many how many times do you have five people in your car, Tom, with the amount you drive? When when is the last time you had five people? In your uh, car? I don't generally have five, but I do have four fairly frequently. Yeah, well, uh, a hybrid can comfortably fit four in a four, four door sedan hybrid. Oh, you mean like uh, like what? Where, where, which hybrid? The Honda Hybrid. Uh, I'm driving a Honda Hy Hybrid Civic. It's got plenty a of Civic. Of that. It's a four door. Well, if I had four 110-pound uh, friends, I guess I could put them in a Civic, but come on. Come on, you're in L.A. You're not in Portland. <laughs> Seriously. I highly doubt you would have any woman in your car more than 127 pounds. Am no, I right? I guarantee, I guarantee I wouldn't have a woman over 127 pounds, but, uh, as exactly. far as, but, but as far as if I have guys in the car, if we're going to the ball game... There's no way you're putting four guys in a, in a Honda Civic. It's not happening. <laughs> well, take a look at the... the when they uh, get out, they look like the clowns at the circus getting out of the little car. Yeah. Well, anyway, that, that's all I got, man. Just don't fund okay. Haji more than you need to, all right? Oh, boy. Haji. All right. <laughs> Bo on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Dad, how are you? I'm okay, sir. All right, listen. I uh, I have a uh, I have a problem with this statement that they were all in this together. You know, I drive a Mercedes AMG, so I I know that my car uses gas, and I know what you mean about space, and I totally agree with you. But I have a problem with people calling in saying that we're all in this together because if we were in this together, then China would take a billion of their people off the road and not let them buy cars. Right. There's, there's billions of them over there, and you think any of them ever give a yeah, and I'm supposed to conserve so somebody in India can drive more? No thanks. Yeah, forget it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not doing it. I can't handle it. It's we have crap. learned over the years that socialism and communism do not work, and that no. people do not do things for the common good. They just don't. Everybody, I, it might sound bad, but I'm sitting in my air conditioning right now, and it's blowing on my ass. I love it. Well, my, well, my ass is always, my ass never sticks to that leather seat because it's always properly cooled. And oh my, God. my bedroom tonight will be 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So remember, <laughs> everybody, it's a flex your power alert. I want everybody to flex your power <laughs> and turn your uh, thermostat to 85 so I can sleep comfortably at 68 tonight. I'll tell you what, everybody on the road that's listening right now, if they really think that they're in it together and they're going to do it and try to make, a, make it happen now, it's too late. It's too late. So just look for yourself. And, you know, what do they call it? Carpe diem, right? Steve's the day. Right? 
I'm, I'm, su- I'm supposed to help out so all the people who are buying these big Eddie Bauer edition Ford Explorers to drive to the Starbucks over the years so they can afford to keep driving? No. <laughs> no, anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. I heard the last caller say that we're all in this together, and uh, I disagree completely. I'm in it for myself at this point. And you know what? I'm going to do whatever I can to be comfortable. Good for you. All right, so be good to yourself. Bo, thank you. Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. I was uh, listening to those last two guys that were saying uh, they would like you to drive a hybrid. Yes, they'd like me to drive a hybrid. <laughs> wow. Um, I know I don't make even clearly one uh, thirty-second of what you do, but I'm sitting in a 2008 F-350 turbo diesel. And we're when we always floor down the highway, and and we do it because why? We can afford it. People should really just mind their own. If you can't afford it, you know what? Go to Walmart and buy a bike. <laughs> and it's not my job to buy less of something, so everybody else can afford more. Yeah, you like sixty-eight degrees. I'm from North Dakota. I like sixty. There we go. I find, I find sixty very comfortable. I'm not going to turn my dial up just because the guy at McDonald's can't afford to turn his dial down. Right. <laughs> you know, he, he instead of us trying to work together, as that one guy said, how about the low-end guy buys a blanket? <laughs> <laughs> just buy a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> just pad your ass with a couple of more Cinnabons. Let's go. There you go. And, I mean, maybe, maybe you and I do go to Starbucks. But you know what? We got money for the coffee and the gas. That's right. On Friday, we're not counting our pennies. Oh, I shouldn't have gone to Starbucks on Monday. (laughs) No, we're thinking, oh, dang, I forgot to go to Starbucks on Wednesday. (laughs) I just thought I'd get my point out there, Tom, that, you know what? We got the money. We do what we want. You don't have the money. You do what you can. (laughs) That's right. And it's not up to us to conserve so you can have more. Exactly. And if you'd be so kind, please take me out. Bong rip. Here you go. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. It's Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Brian. Hey, I just wanted to let you know about the uh, LS460H, which is like the car that you have, but it's the hybrid version. Have you ever seen that? Well, it's like the car that I have, except it costs about $40,000 more than what I paid. Oh, so you're not interested in that. Well, for me, it's the bottom line. At the end of the time I own the car, will I save as much as I spent? Well, I think with the hybrid, it's it's a possibility. Not really. Have you seen the mileage on the Lexus hybrid? No, I it's, haven't. Do you know it, it? It's better than the LS430 or the, uh, I think they have an LS450 now too, don't they? Which is not a hybrid. Um, yeah. But it's not, I did the math on it. If but, I thought I would save money driving a hybrid, I would do it. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 with the difference in price of the car, I don't think I would. That makes a lot of sense. And I, I do believe that a car like that is mostly so the tree huggers who can afford a hundred and ten thousand dollar car uh, feel better about driving a, a big car. It makes people feel better. Yeah, definitely. But I don't think it necessarily does anything. Well, Tom, I agree with you a hundred percent. And uh, I love your show. This is this is my first time calling in. I'm a long time listener, and I will be listening for as long as you're on the air. Sounds good to me, Brian. And I just want to be taken out with the guy who shot his wife style. Oh, Freddie Wilhite style. Here you go. I shot my wife in the stomach with 38. Why did you do this? She enticed me, and she ridiculed me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. I think she did. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show. 
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. People give me crap about driving a V8. I'm not going to stop. William on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, with you? I'm here to back you on this one. I got thousands of dollars under the hood of my Mustang. I get eight miles to the gallon everywhere, and I'm a hybrid mechanic. I work on hybrid vehicles all day. I'm telling you, you buy one of those cars, you're going to regret it. The gas mileage is great. I'm sure, you're getting around everywhere. That's all well and good. You're paying more out of your pocket for the labor, for the parts, for the diagnostics. And I know because they write my paycheck, and I can afford my bad habits. I can afford my pack a day. I can afford my $900 in gas a month. How great is that? All these people think they're helping the environment. By going to you and buying that hybrid car, they're helping support your lifestyle of driving a Mustang. They can they can come. They can support me all they want. You know, They're paying over sticker price for these cars because they're in such high demand right now. And I'm driving around filling up three, four times a week, and I only commute 30 miles. <laughs> so you want to you want to go you want to buy one of these cars go go buy a Prius I dare you go buy a Prius you're going to pay me twelve hundred dollars to tell you why your check engine lights on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't you can't fit five people in one of those cars. I can fit five people in my Mustang. They're all females, and if they don't fit, that means one of them's too big, and they shouldn't be in there anyway. Yeah, I think you're right about that, Alfredo. You're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Doing great. I have to tell you, I have to say thank you for all your knowledge, and I have to agree on this one with you as well. And here's my point. My girlfriend, she lives an hour and a half away from my house. I like to go see her at least three or four times a week. I mean, should I have, should I have, you know, to stop in doing that just because somebody else, you know, can use a little bit of gasoline too? You know, I have to, I want to go see her, and I will go see her no matter what people say. It's my money, and I will pay for that gasoline, man. And consider the alternative. What if she knew where you lived? Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry? I say consider the alternative. What would happen if she knew where you lived? <laughs> well, uh, she she does know. I uh, would ne never let him know that. Well, we've been together for quite a while, and she does the same, you know. And she likes you a lot. She agrees with everything that you say, and she comes mm -hmm. to see me. As much as I go to see her, and she never complains about the gasoline because she works and uh, she want to do it, you know, and nobody's going to tell her what to do with what she's got, or nobody's going to tell me what to do with what I have. And that's the point. There we go. Scott on the top like his show. Hello. Dad. Son. Okay, listen, people. Tom Mike is a millionaire. We can all agree about that. Tom Mike could be driving an Audi A8 with a W12 motor. He could be driving an AMG S Class Mercedes that gets 10 miles a gallon, but as big as a spaceship inside. But he's not. He's driving a car that is basically fuel efficient. Anything over 20 miles a gallon is basically fuel efficient. So he is doing his part. So if you want to talk about driving your 40 mile a gallon, you know, cars, what have you, fine, talk about that. But this, thank God that not everybody is, you know, buying a house half the size so they can drive twice the size of the car. And, you know, and you're using your common sense. Well, I, I agree with you, and uh, it is true on the, on the highway. And I spend a lot of time driving to my new home now up in Santa Barbara County. On the highway, my car gets 23 miles to the gallon. That's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. I drive a small SUV, and I get worse gas miles than you do. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, okay, you know, you know what, people, you look at look at Joe Schmuck that I live next door to. He lives in a probably three hundred thousand dollar house, for maybe four hundred thousand dollar house, and he's driving. I think it's a BMW Seven Series that's got this huge motor in it, and he's living in a small house like that, so he can drive this huge car. You could be driving. You could be driving a Phaeton. You could be driving a, a, a Bentley Continental GT. I could be driving a Maybach. Right, that's my point. So shut up about this whole Tron is ruining the world, you know. Get up, you guys. I don't get it. I don't get it. We're all in this together. We need to hold it together. We need to We need to conserve. Ah, uh, go plant a tree, people. All right, Tom. Hey, take me out travel style. Here you go, Scott. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, baninge. Mama. 
One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Here comes Danny on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, we live in America, and we live in America for a reason. You know, we make our own choices, and that's our right. I don't think anybody should be getting down on anybody or telling people to make their own choice. This and that about gas prices are too high. Simply, you know, you have the money, you're going to have fun. Go have fun. Don't don't try to bring everybody else around you down. It's it's just kind of getting out of control. I mean, I drive a tow truck, and I run across people all the time with they ran out of gas and they can't afford gas and they ask me for free gas and it's like, why are you going to be on the road if you can't afford the gas? Why Anybody who wants about- to conserve, you go right ahead. That's right. In I fact, mean, those I, of I, you I who conserve, I appreciate it because you're bringing my cost up. Well, I look at it as, you know, live your life the way you're going to live it. Why, why have to live under somebody else's standards? If you have the money, then spend it. If you don't have the money, then don't complain that you don't have the money. Find a better job and make some more money. You're right about that, Danny. Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how's it going? Okay, Mike. Hey, let him conserve. It's more gas for me and my my car with my 454 in it. I got a 72 <laughs> Nova. I drive to and from work every day. My first car was a 76 Nova. I love the car. I get thumbs up. I suck down the gas. I don't care. I can afford it. Get out of my way. It's very yeah. simple. These people in these little Prius, uh, my friend looked into it. Price it out. Cost you more than it does a standard car running, you know, regular gas car. It'll cost you more in the long run. Why buy one? I understand what you're saying, Mike. I, it doesn't make sense, you know? What I drive is nobody else's business. What you drive is nobody else's business. I had a lady at the gas station tell me, how can you afford to drive it with these gas prices? I looked at her and said, because I can. Right. <laughs> And who knows? Maybe you're giving up other things. Cigarettes, Starbucks. No, I still got my cigarettes. Still got my, you know, eight to ten beers a night. It's there America. We, we watch football. We watch porn. We drive cars. We suck down gas. Now, they don't have cup holders in those old Novas, do they? <laughs> no, they don't, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got a bench seat, so, you know, it's very convenient for my girlfriend to slide over at night and take care of me while I'm driving. Oh, I love that. So she tries to get me to drive her Civic to take my car to work, but ain't happening. <laughs> Mike, thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Mike. Man, I, you know, I agree with you. We drive what we want to drive. We're not all in this together. There's a reason why we didn't sign the Kyoto Treaty. You know, you have, like you said, you have these people in China that are just killing us. But yeah, we're supposed to take the responsibility for them. Yeah, how many pollutants does China put into the air? I've read those stories. They put in more than we do. And they're an up-and-coming country that didn't want to sign the Kyoto Treaty. So we have to, we had to make our own pact. You know, I drive a, a GM truck, but I bought it because it's a truck, not because of its gas mileage. And if you if you look at the one of the newer Fortune 500 companies, their company rents the Prius batteries, the Prius owners. It, it costs ten thousand dollars to get a Prius battery. I mean, that's that's crazy. Well, uh, again, uh, you know, I do believe that many times people think they're uh, doing a good thing when in reality they're. Um, uh, they're doing less of one thing and more of another thing. In the end, it ends up being a wash. I think that's true. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I uh, hey. love your show. Thank you. Um, hey, you know what? If, if people want to sit here and talk about conservation and all this this junk on, on you know, and, and bad mouth you about your car, we should look at the big picture. For the, the cost of the Iraqi war, they could have put solar panels on every house in, in California by now. That's conservation. I'm from the Midwest, and, and uh, they have all kinds of ethanol plants that they've built out there. And you know what happened a couple of years ago? What? All the oil companies bought those ethanol plants up, bought every one of them, and raised the price of ethanol to the exact same price as gas. Now, that's a big picture. Not to mention the fact that um, some people say it takes more energy to make ethanol than it creates. Absolutely. But the, 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 the gasoline companies still felt threatened by that, and they bought them all up and raised the price. Uh, 
like I say, we could have put solar panels on every house in, in, in California by now. And, uh, and that would have been some big savings and long-term savings. Matt, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Doug on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Father, how are you? Son, I'm great. I'm going to have to disagree on this one because I bought a Nissan Altima hybrid back in October. And the key to ultimate, uh, well, the key to hybrid is to lease them because it, if you keep them, you got to change the batteries after 100,000 miles, and that's where the majority of the costs come. And lease, they just work in all the services to your lease, so it's uh, cost affordable. And I'm loving it. Fifty dollars gets me 600 miles. Look at you. Yeah. You have it all figured out. Well, not really. I could, I'll have it all figured out after you take me out with a bong rip. <laughs> Here you go, Doug. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. I'm talking about all the people give me a hard time about driving a big car. I drive a V8. You bet I do. Why do I owe it to you to drive a smaller car? Seriously, Joe on the Tom like his show. Hello, Joe. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi. I was just enjoying a twenty five dollar cigar, waiting for the call, but I just wanted. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that I make six times what my buddies make, and uh, they're bitching about gas all the time. To me, it, uh, gas costs one sixth of what it does to them, so it doesn't. I don't even feel it. And they're they're complaining, bitching to me about gas all the time. I said, you know what? Make more money, so it won't be a problem. But these are easier said than easier said than done. So I I just uh, I just basically say, you know, it's no big deal to me. Good points, Joe. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Brian. Is Brian out there? Yeah, there he right is. Here. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm a new listener. I've been listening to you for, you know, about four months. Moved out here from Wisconsin. And, and what I don't understand is how quickly everyone forgets how, how we're going backwards in gas mileage. I mean, when I was 17, 18 years old, my mom bought a Honda that got 56 miles a gallon. And it was no electric. It was a straight carburetor, four banger. And uh, now they're telling us that 33 miles to the gallon is a great gas mileage. I don't understand that. And whatever happened to full electric cars, they actually work, but they were put on the back burner because there's no profit to be made. You know, and that's what I don't understand, how they can sit here and tell us to go green when they're putting everything that is green on the shelf so they can't, because they can't make a profit on it. And that's what I don't understand. Well, uh, uh, let's face it, uh, these cars are harder to, uh, uh, to make. Uh, they are harder to, you know, the technology is more complicated. And, uh, you know, the other thing is that these electric cars, they were selling them at some ridiculously low price. GM wouldn't even let you own one. You had to lease it, remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Well, I remember when they were coming out, you know, when the big thing was uh, after Carter, uh, the big thing was, you know, you know, putting solar panels on your car, making it fully electric and only switching it to gas if you had, if the sun wasn't out or there wasn't enough solar power, whatever. Um, and then that just went right. I mean, they actually proved that it worked, but they went right out the window because they figured out, hey, you can't charge for the sun. Uh, you know, <laughs> and that's why I said, see that our biggest hindrance in becoming fuel efficient is the oil company. It's all they do. No, is it is not the oil. Back. I don't believe that for one minute. That. But I, I thank you for the call. The Tom Likas Show.